Tropical Storm Dawn, way up there at the top right of the screen. We'll run it one more time and you can see it spinning around out there. Then as the area heads into nighttime, you can see the cold cumulonimbus tops associated with the strong showers in that storm. A quick look at the climate indexes shows everything fairly neutral. The Matt and Julian oscillation is weak, so nothing going on there. And I have had some questions about where this data comes from. It's from the NOAA Climate Prediction Center. And I do go through their index numbers under teleconnections. If you Google for that, you'll find this data. And I plot it up on this diagram for you all to enjoy. Of course, we're all interested what's going on in the sky, including astronomy. And this evening, right around sunset, some interesting stuff taking place. Crescent moon, very small sliver there, in the western sky. Venus down low, Mars off to the left, and behind this tree, Mercury. So a big grouping of planets, and right in the middle, Regulus, a star, right there in the middle, 71 light years away, I believe. Actually, 79 light years away, I had to look that up. But in the morning sky, around 4 or 5 in the morning, you look out to the east, that's where the gas giants are. We've got Jupiter up there. And where's Saturn? Yeah, way up there to the south, up high in the sky. And out to the east, the Pleiades, to the lower left of Jupiter. And as we head into mid-July, we're getting into the dog days of summer. And that's named after the star Sirius, which is very low on the southern horizon, mostly in the lower latitudes, and it's kind of a daytime star. But we start seeing that to the south this time of year, and hence the name dog days. So, yeah, getting into late summer, and we get a couple fronts across the Great Plains, the air behind it, not very cold, although eventually it will be drawing some colder air down into the Midwest and the central U.S. as we go into the start of the weekend. And some of that Canadian wildfire smoke has made it out to the East Coast. It has been plaguing parts of the Southeast over the past couple of days, and now we're starting to see it move off into the coastal regions and up into Maine and a few slivers through Ohio and Michigan. The monsoon storms are going this afternoon in Arizona, and with that, some very hot temperatures up to 116 there at Phoenix. We've got 106 at Las Vegas and 106 at Barstow. 116 is just 6 degrees shy of the all-time record for Phoenix. That was set back in 1990, and I was actually on shift at uh, the Tonopah Test Range when that happened long time ago. That was my first year in the Air Force. But yeah, I was monitoring that on the teleprinter as that came in. And on that same event, Tucson hit 117, breaking their all-time record. Well, this is how it's stacking up right now as we record this. Phoenix is 117. That breaks the record for the date. And of course, that's five degrees from their all-time record. Tucson is at 112. And I believe that would have been an all-time record before the 1990 event. I think at the time their all-time high was 111, but of course now it's 117. And we've got 117 at Needles and 117 at Blythe, so some very toasty weather. And moving out to the east, hot conditions, 101 at Albuquerque, a little bit of downslope flow through that area, 109 at El Paso, a very hot day there, and we've got 111 at Roswell. And it doesn't stop. If you go further to the east, we're looking at 108 there at Breckenridge, 108 at Mineral Wells, and we had 110s a couple of days ago through this stretch of Texas right there. And there's a look at what's causing it, a big, expansive subtropical ridge stretching from Southern California to Mississippi. Most of our prevailing westerlies are well to the north, Definitely taking place there in Minnesota and the Dakotas and another Jet Max up there in New York. And that outlines the polar front jet. But down south, weaker flow. Any storms that get going are not sheared at all. In fact, a lot of warm air aloft helping to 
suppress storms. But this will be moving north a little bit over the next several days, and that will allow some easterly flow into parts of Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. And there you go. That's a look at it on the AWIP system, most of the heavier convection moving offshore, but the barrier islands of North Carolina still under the gun. The tail end of the front producing some storms as well in Georgia, and that forms up into an MCS, although it's not very organized. However, you can see out ahead of it, dew points are in the mid-70s, so plenty of moisture available for those storms. Texas is in the midst of a drought right now. Big subtropical ridge covering that area. You can see 109 there popping up briefly at Wichita Falls. However, the radar definitely is showing some patterns, and that shows you the value of radar even in quiet conditions because you can look around and find an outflow boundary somewhere in this stuff. We haven't had much convection going on lately, so not much to see. But if we had a little bit more activity, it would probably resolve on this clear air imagery. So always be looking at the radar data, even on a quiet day. In fact, yeah, that up there around Pampa to Dumas and back towards Tucumcari, that is indicative of some sort of outflow boundary. So that's a look at the Amarillo area. Looks clear as a bell through that region. But if we switch over to that radar, that outflow boundary does show up. And if we had a little bit more moisture, that would be a focus for convection. And as we mentioned, numerous storms through the southwest as that monsoon gets into gear. The subtropical ridge cutting down the convection just a little bit. But let's go over to that visible imagery and get a look. And that shows that it is trying. The Four Corners does have some congested cumulus, but not a whole lot of vertical development. Some of those could be producing some weak showers. The heavier convection, well, that's from Tucumcari, Clovis, Las Vegas, all the way down south of Albuquerque and down into Douglas and Nogales and even around Tucson. Tucson located right in there. Some big storms plaguing parts of northeast Nevada and northwestern Utah this afternoon. You can see the sheared anvils on this convection. And even down in the Reno area, Carson City, some sheer thunderstorms as well. Some of those areas under a marginal risk for severe weather. And not really a clear cause of that on the surface analysis. Don't really see any fronts through that area. Although several days ago, it looked like there was something through that region. So there may be some boundaries. And some of those weather systems may have drawn some moisture into that Great Basin region. Let's head up north into Alaska. It was kind of hard to find any fronts. I think there is something through there, but it's not very well defined. Out ahead of it, warm air. Temperatures in the 70s, a few 80s, and significant wildfire smoke. This has been a very hard-hit area over the past couple weeks from Fort Nelson all the way up into the McKenzie River Basin. Alaska looking mild, 60s and 70s this afternoon north of this active Gulf of Alaska system, then heading into the Canadian Arctic. Very typical weather, 30s and 40s. Some of that cold air making it down into the western Hudson Bay region, and that will be advancing into the north central and midwest regions as we go into Friday and Saturday. Then taking a look out east, wildfire smoke all the way up into Labrador, temperatures near 82 which is very high for that region, and showers and a few thunderstorms from Shefferville down towards Quebec City. Well, we've been talking about some very hot weather. Let's look at that 500 millibar chart and check the patterns over the next several days. Going into Saturday, that upper level high pretty much centered over northern Arizona. You can see it building north as we go into Sunday up there into Utah, the ridge builds up into Montana. So this area is going to be heating up going into the weekend. And you can see that ridge moving to the east into the Dakotas. The high centered across southern Colorado, ridge up to the north. So this area will be heating up 
especially going into next week across the north central U.S. Now, one way we can see that is with the tropopause data. This is the dynamic tropopause chart. This is the two PVU surface. Basically, we're looking at the height of the tropopause, and it's very high across the southwestern U.S. You can see those 100 values, oranges and yellows up here on the scale. That's near 100 millibars. 100 millibars, that's up at about 54,000 feet. And then up in Minnesota, we've got blues and cyan colors. Those are near 400, 400 millibars, 300 to 400. Cyans and blues are right in here. 300 millibars is up at about 30,000 feet. So the tropopause is a lot lower up north. And that corresponds to the colder air up there in Ontario and Quebec. So in a way, we can kind of track where the hottest temperatures are. And I think this little slug of orange, that's very high tropopause surfaces. And you can see that moving up into California as we go into Friday. So I think that's going to correspond to some strong heating. So that's where that slug is late on Friday. If we take a look at pivotal weather and check out the soundings for the San Joaquin Valley, say around Fresno, Bakersfield, Let's take a look at that. And you can see it's almost dry adiabatic all the way up. In fact, it looks like the tropopause is way up there above 100 millibars. So that is a very hot profile. That's conducive to temperatures in the 110s. However, for the most part, the temperatures should be in the upper 100s. So this corresponds to some of the stronger heating. Let's bring that forward into late Saturday and Sunday. You can see it advancing to the north and into Idaho. So, yeah, that corresponds to some strong heating. And you can see it advancing there into the Dakotas. That's a reflection of the warmer air down in the lower levels and wraps around that anticyclone. You can see it right there, big upper level high with clockwise circulation around it. And one consequence as well we are opening up some northerly flow, so as you go to the east, some cooler air coming out of Canada. Of course, you're interested in what's going on in your area, so let's check it out. This is going to be tomorrow. 116 again for Phoenix, 112 at Las Vegas. That heat just continues. Friday, more heat. You can see 121 there at Palm Springs. That's some hot weather. 105 at Sacramento, and that heat spreading up into the Great Basin. There's Saturday, hot temperatures from Idaho up to Montana. And on Sunday, the heat concentrated in Idaho and Montana. From Monday, it shifts eastward into the high plains, and Tuesday, out there into South Dakota and parts of the north central plains. Looking at 92 up there at Minneapolis, 95 at Des Moines, and 97 at North Platte. However, before that air gets there, there will be some cool air coming down. Let me back that up, and you can see it right there. So we've gone back to Thursday. That's some cold air coming south out of the Dakotas, highs in the 70s and 80s, and nighttime lows in the 50s and 60s, as far south as Interstate 20. Let's take a quick look out there in the Pacific Hawaii being grazed by former major Hurricane Calvin, now a post-tropical cyclone, looking at 40-mile-an-hour winds on that, with a pressure of 1009 millibars. And there's kind of a rare look at that system on AWIPS. The circulation well to the south right down here. You can see the curl in the cloud field. You can see the GFS wind field kind of spiraling around like that. Not much left of the circulation and the islands are well to the north, but still some showers moving through Honolulu and back towards, I think that's Molokai. And there's a closer look at that area. You can see the peak winds up to about 27 knots and plenty of showers through that region. And then looking down the road at the Atlantic, well, dawn is about out of the picture. However, we're going to be seeing the intertropical convergence zone become active, maybe a wave coming off the West African coast and approaching the Lesser Antilles. And there you go. There's the breakdown. That's what we have right now. 
the intertropical convergence zone right through that area, a couple of closed circulations along it, and rolling forward. Yeah, there's Dawn way up there at the top. Rolling forward, you can see it does remain kind of unsettled over the next seven, eight days. And as we get into midweek next week, this could develop. That's quite a ways out, but it will bear watching. But the GFS carrying that as a maybe weak tropical depression and opening up into an easterly wave by Friday next week. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. We'll close out with some more of that great footage, courtesy of Greg, out in the Texas Hill Country. Thanks to our many supporters, and I do want to ask if you're involved on social media or weather forums, weather groups, please mention us and spread the word. I would certainly like to see this program expand over the coming months. Anyway, hope you have a great Wednesday evening. We'll see you back here again on Friday. Take care and hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.